Hello and welcome back. And that is right, we've got Marco from Acer Store back on the channel answering your questions. Let's be honest, this month and indeed the end of last month, we talked about a lot of things here on the channel, but I would argue two of the standout things were the Acer Store Flash Store Gen 2 and the Lock Store Gen 3. So, canvassing those comments and asking you guys on social media for questions, we're going to put your questions to him. We're going to find out more about these products, what they are, what they aren't, and hopefully Acer Store will let us know more about it, whether it's worth waiting on them for your data. But straight away, we're going to crack on with question one. I would argue this is the most common cue that came up, particularly in the Flash Store Gen 2 video, and that was, why have Acer Store opted for an embedded Ryzen processor in the newer generation of devices, as opposed to an Intel processor, or even an integrated graphics AMD equivalent? Well, you know, for us, it was just a really easy option. You know, current uh, Intel processors were of a similar class just don't come with the features we need to build an excellent NAS solution. See, you know, we, we normally use the uh, Celeron processors. Often they come with uh, eight or nine PCI Express lanes, you know, mm. and, uh, and transcoding and the iGPU. And they're great for you know, for, uh, smaller NASes with four or six bays maximum. But the problem is, is that we're coming into the age of uh, M.2 SSDs that use PCI Express lanes. And uh, these CPUs just don't come with uh, the amount that we need. Not only is it missing, P uh, you know, doesn't have enough PCI Express lanes, the AMD Ryzen's come with uh, PCI Express 4.0, so we can bring more, uh, mm. more speed to that, as well as, uh, you know, ECC. ECC is something people have asked us over and over and over again. I learn a lot usually from YouTube commenters when, uh, you know, when we release a product or release a video with, uh, with another YouTuber. People always ask me, I want ECC or I want Ryzen or I want desktop CPUs. Uh, we, we do do desktop CPUs, but that's a, different, a whole different thing. Mm. But ECC, huge thing. The Intel CPUs, they don't, you know... They don't come with very big RAM because they're Celerons. They're you know they're Intel's lower product class. AMD's Ryzen embedded isn't a low class product. It's just a different class product. It's mm. designed for embedded systems like NAS devices. It comes with huge support for RAM, DDR5, ECC. It comes with dual 10G built into the SOC that we don't have to waste PCI Express lanes to to do that. So when we release now. Uh, NAS devices with all the bells and whistles. We have lanes on USB 4 that can take, you know, advantage of those PCI Express lanes. The aforementioned M.2, right? Like mm -hmm. NVMe SSDs, right? We need those. And Intel's current offerings are either too limited or too expensive. You know, we can talk mm -hmm. about the uh, the N series of uh, Intel processors, but many of them come with the the aforementioned limitations. Yes, they do have the iGPU, and we are missing the iGPU in the Ryzen processor. But hopefully, I'm fighting for at least, or at least I'm trying to uh, initiate a uh, feasibility study to re-add transcoding support for anybody who happens to has an eGPU enclosure too. So, but no mm -hmm. guarantees. I was going to wonder if, uh, if this is the Flash Store Gen 2, and I know this isn't strictly one of the questions, but I thought it's related. With yeah. the Flash Store Gen 2, does that mean that the Gen 1 is now reaching the end of its production, or are we talking about a two-horse race range here? Uh, no, no. Uh, we're going to uh, keep the, uh, the Flash Store Gen 1 for a little while longer as well. It still makes a uh, great NAS device for... Uh, people more on a budget. If you don't need 10G, you can still pick up the Flash Store 6. Uh, you know, mm. think of it more as a uh, product segmentation uh, in a way. A lot of, like a lot of GPU companies nowadays do this, right? You don't really see 4030s or, you know, or 4040s or 4010s, right? You know, if you want a slower, cheaper GPU, a lot of people will just simply buy a last gen GPU, you mm. know, instead. It's, uh, you know, and that, that's sort of the same, same thing that we're doing. Mm. I do wonder if next year we'll see a Gen 4 uh, with some powerful end series, but we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Um, okay, as so long as it's the right price. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so straight away, uh, next question. Regarding uh, USB 4 connectivity, 
uh, and that and that the connections design uh, regarding the reported USB four connectivity and the connections design shared connectivity with Thunderbolt mm -hmm. four. Is there any further development towards this as a means of connectivity, i.e., Thunderbolt or USB four connected NAS? Well, absolutely. See, USB four has Thunderbolt capabilities, just not allowed to use the Thunderbolt name. Mm. Uh, but it comes with many, with uh, almost all of the same features, including the uh, PCI Express tunneling and uh, you know protocols and everything like that. Mm. The USB over Thunderbolt protocol is uh, supported in USB four, and I'm pressuring them to make sure we include it uh, in the product. We are doing tests uh, on the product. But I can't guarantee it will be out immediately on product launch at this mm. point in time because we are certainly working on numerous different uh, features for the NAS. But it's something that they have agreed to look into at the very least. Mm. I mean, that would be quite the coup if uh, your brand rolled out um, a Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 M2 mm. NVMe flash system, ECC memory bells and whistles. Um, Again, I hope you guys can knock on that because that will be, I think a lot of users watching from afar, that would be a jumping in point for them, particularly yeah, the pro production. Absolutely. A lot, of people would, uh, a lot of people would like to connect their NAS as a DAS for their direct editing system while other people you know, want to use it in other ways, right? You might have a family or you might have other mm. people working in your office to collab or edit videos or whatnot. Who knows, right? But having a, uh, a main system, you know, do the hardest work is certainly a uh, use case scenario. I think it'll be interesting because QNAP largely dominate that market. And even though mm. in the last, well, at least five years, to my knowledge, there's been some alternatives from QSAN, from Promise, they've tried to roll out Thunderbolt NASes. They've all seemingly gone nowhere. So it's, it's a tough nut to crack. Um, mm. Anyway, next question. Um, Regarding the Locker Store Gen 3, will the hardware profile of the Locker Store Gen 3 be the same across all of the 4, 6, 8, and 10 bay profiles? And while you're at it, why is there no 2 bay? Uh, so to answer the first question, do we have uh, you know do we have the same hardware between all the uh, different bays? Yes, it's just really it's really that simple actually. Yeah, cool. That was quick. And uh, <laughs> why why not 2 bay? We just couldn't. The uh... 2 bay is tough because. We have to make sacrifices with the two base size, and mm. you know, with the like with the last gen, uh, last generation locker store, right? We can't put in the PCI Express device. We can't put in the uh, on-screen display right on the front of the NAS, right? We mm. can't do that. Uh, a few different things, and as well as that, these CPUs also use uh, take more heat. They are hugely faster, and it's very, very uh, efficient, far more efficient than the Intel Celeron that we're using, but it, it's also some more heat in absolute terms as well, even though it's relatively more efficient. And we don't think we could give a good enough experience with the, uh, the two bay in this, uh, in this segment. We do have numerous two bays on the market right now that, that will be, uh, you know, that will be very good for most people, but you know, you want a screaming fast NAS and then you're going to cripple it. Like, what's the yeah. point? There will be some um, crushing there. Okay, so next question. I think this is something that's arisen a great deal more in the last few weeks, obviously, in the comments, and that is to do with uh, the connection between Acer Store and Asus. Uh, the exact question. Uh, in light of recent issues um, highlighted uh, by Gamers Nexus surrounding, uh, let's just say, questionable warranty practices, both financial and just communica uh, communication by Asus, um, can you deal? Can you detail a little bit more about the business and working relationship between Acer Store and Asus, and more importantly, should users be concerned? No, users shouldn't be concerned. Uh, we can see we are a uh, separate company run. Uh, we're separately or separate run. We have we have an independent structure here at Asus Store. We uh, we run everything independently. Our warranty is independent. Our HR is independent. Our finances are independent. We were spun off from Asus 13 years ago, but we run everything independently. We're a joint venture, so we don't, we're not a fully owned subsidiary as well. When people purchase products from us, they're only purchasing from us, they're only supporting us. Our warranty, our distribution, our logistics, all completely independent. We even make our products now in our own factories. While we have adopted some of Asus's design philosophies, our warranties are certainly not uh, you know, charged people for a minor nick inside their chassis or anything like that. Absolutely. We uh, look to uh, build our warranty up to be 
uh, more right to repair friendly and uh, you know and also comply with the uh, local you know local consumer laws as well we want to make sure that uh, we are fully compliant not just that we also want to create a good experience for people as well and just to, so if i was buying an uh, an asus store product and i needed to submit an rma that's not going to the same location as an asus no, product no it it's comes to us completely different system it's completely it's, us okay. our problems are our problems their problems are their problems they don't you know and they don't man what them. problems they are what <laughs> problems they are Oh, so next question, um, how soon after the development of the Flash Door Gen 1 was the Gen 2 development started? Moreover, uh, I've mentioned earlier on about Gen 2 being a replacement for Gen 1 or a further expansion, so we've already covered that. But yeah, with regards to the Gen 2 development, how soon after Gen 1's development and frank success last year uh, was the Gen 2 de uh, in development? Well, we start, you know, whenever we release a new product, we start going to the drawing board for the next one, right? We have to, we, we take our profits and reinvest them into the mm. company. So, you know, how soon? Immediately. Yeah. Well, again, it was just, I remember during my um, original coverage at the Flash Door at launch, mm -hmm. A lot of users were like, well, I'm not going to get it without ECC. I'm not that CPU. It's not going to give me anything. Those M.2s are giving me no bandwidth. So it would, well, it's, it's nice. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. It's a nice response to that. It's one of those things in hindsight. It would have been good. Um, next question. Um, what was the motivation behind featuring 5 gigabit Ethernet on the new series? With 2.5 GBE engagement, still not, I would consider, industry standard, and most users just skipping it and going straight to 10G. Is this just a gimmick? Why 5G on these systems? Well, I mean, they're not 5G systems. Remember, they're still dual mm. 10G systems. Mm. However, uh, the problem with the 10G ports is that they don't support uh, wake on WAN. Cool. And, and a lot of people still like that feature. See, we got the 5G controllers for a good deal, almost the same price as the 2.5G uh, mm. controllers. So originally what it would have done like the Locker Store 10 first gen, right? It would have been the two mm. 10Gs and the two 2.5Gs for the Wake on WAN or anybody who requires that feature, right? You can plug mm. the two 10Gs for your, uh, your home or office and then the two and a half G can just be your Wake on WAN port if needed. Mm. Or, and the problem is, is that because of that, we have to put in something. But since we got these 5Gs for a better deal, why not, right? Mm. You know, we'll just give people a free upgrade, you know, and uh, they're free to use them. We have a little bit, a few extra PCI Express lanes after the uh, uh, development was all said and done. So we added them in to, as a bit of a bonus. Mm. I mean, again, I, we, a lot of my, I think I mentioned this in the initial video, it felt like, oh, we've got this extra bit of resources left over. I mean, I wasn't aware of any kind of, you know, larger purchasing um, uh, deals, if you will. But I mm -hmm. liked the idea that there was this extra bandwidth there. And rather than it go to waste or be sitting in the background, boom, there it was. It's a fantastic amount of bandwidth at, the, at your disposal. I mean, again, right. weirdly, I actually like the combination 5G and 10G more on the locker store than I do anything to do with the flash door simply because you've already got a tiered storage system there so tiered storage and then tiered network connections mm -hmm. to me that's very very appealing on creating that hierarchical storage um next up um <clears throat> Um, your recent press release um, alluded to a larger scale update coming to your NAS software, the ADM. Um, are you able to detail any more information about what's actually going to be included in that larger OS upgrade? Unfortunately, right now, uh, it's uh, still a work in progress, and I'd like to get more information later on. Mm. Fair enough. I mean, again, it's just that idea of a large, people are expecting quite a lot from a larger OS upgrade, right. not a sub revision. And ADM, like ADM nails the fundamentals, I think. But there again, a lot of requests that people always ask about. You've got BTRFS, but mm -hmm. a flexible RAID system, right one to read many support. Uh, you've already got right one to read many, actually. Um, uh, even ZFS support, AI powered tools. Right. That's all we've, heard, we've heard that one, but for file systems, we have to test a lot. We want to make sure that people you know, don't lose their data. I understand that it is widely regarded that ZFS is a very stable file system these days, especially, but mm. we 
you know, we're not just buying one NAS and putting it into our basement, right? Which, mm. you know, your chances are very, very low for your configuration, but we're selling thousands of these things. The chances of something going wrong, mm. you know, increase, right? So we have to be extra careful when we're dealing with people's data. But uh, ADM5, like right now, we, we know for sure, obviously, it's going to be a uh, UI redesign and several new features, but they're still being tested right now. And I'm not exactly sure what's going to be included. And thus, I'm a little bit reluctant to go uh, further. It will be at cool. Computex. So what you see there, you're certainly welcome to report on. Um, um, but at this then. point, we just don't have, I don't have enough information. No worries. It's better to have some answer like that than no answer whatsoever. So right. uh, thank you. Um, uh, next up. Okay, so this was another, another question. I think I post, I kind of mentioned this in the mm. video, but a few other users frankly articulated it better than yeah. me. Um, the Flash Door Gen 2 seemingly has a lot of bandwidth churning going on under the hood. Um, have you got any, any early figures with regards to system temps, power consumption, that sort of thing? Is this all no, still in progress? No, unfortunately, or? it's still being worked on and it will still be, like we'll be showing it off at Computex, but we don't have enough figures on it yet because we're still doing designs to, you know, tweaking the efficiency, tweaking the software, tweaking mm. the hardware, tweaking the cooling, right? And all this stuff affects the number to the point that any number I give right now is useless. Mm. I mean, again, at least it's, I mean, knowing that it's worked on, I guess, is enough. I think, again, a lot of it, we'll touch on a question on this later on, but it's really going to come down to that launch window and if and when that is. Right, we'll we, can, we can come back to this when it's a little bit closer, mm. then I can give you something that's a little bit, you know, helpful. Um, so the next question, this is another one that I think is a contentious point in the comments, but it is worth touching mm. on. Um, um, with a, a lot of discussion about the influx, of uh, NAS devices, NAS boards, NAS hardware coming out of China, um, what um, and just sort of flooding the market at the moment, what is yeah. it that you guys are bringing to the table that sets you apart from those devices? Well, we certainly make our devices here, you know, nearby as well in, uh, in Taipei, but uh, at the same time, we, uh, you know, we bring a much uh, much more quality product as well. We have a 0.6% failure rate within the warranty period of our products and uh, mm -hmm. we overbuild them. We understand the criticisms that people have about using Celerons and whatnot and other low-end parts, but we overbuild them to make sure they last so we can try to, you know, reduce the support costs, right? Mm -hmm. But <laughs> And make sure the... And the other thing too is that you know we make not only do we have quality we have the logistics and support as well and we have you know the brand recognition that uh you know and we continue to build our brand recognition as well at the same time you know we we, we see the you we see the u greens we see a lot of the uh what was the zima board as well that mm -hmm. i've heard of as well and it's right up there yeah yeah <laughs> like i tried the os and uh you know Building a NAS is hard. Building a NAS that keeps people's data safe is hard. And we're, you know, we've been at it for 11 years. We're, we're a trusted brand by, mo uh, by many people across the world in mm. numerous countries. You know, we've, we've built, uh, we've uh, proven ourselves. We're not going to say anybody's perfect. You know, don't mm. tell, you know, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, you know, we have the experience to do this in a quality way with software that's, uh, that's really good and really well done, you know. And pretty much our only issue is that we just need to have more features. Mm. You know, I, I, again, the, oh, sorry, guy, sorry. Yeah, with sorry. you know, with uh, a lot, a lot of the uh, the third party OSs that, uh, sorry, a lot of the third party NAS brands that are, uh, you know, if they're doing their own in home software, right? It might just simply not be as polished. Mm. I think uh, when I, whenever I talk about a lot of these products, CWWK, Top Turn, that kind of stuff, a lot of them I talked about on the channel recently, I make a point of highlighting this in the videos and I've discussed it in comments with several people, warranty. Yeah. And the, with those products, there is no denying that when you buy them, I do not feel a, a confident sense of warranty and support from them. Mm -hmm. And I articulate that kind of, it's great for the money, and, and predominantly a lot of these products are AliExpress purchased. I still recommend them for certain kinds of users. I right. certainly wouldn't recommend them for enterprise grade, you know, mission critical data, but it is that point warranty. And I think there is not a feeling that I have an honorable warranty in one than I do have from a product like yourselves. And I think yeah. 
how important that is to a user based on their experience can often be the, the bigger point where it's much beyond value or the cost of the item because they're thinking the cost of loss, the cost of replacement, the cost of logistics. Mm -hmm. um, For a company our size, we, uh, you know, we have mm. experience and have developed our warranty system and we're always tweaking it and trying to improve it every single day. So at the same, you know, we have, so we started in 2011, so that'd be 13 years right now of mm. experience that we have and 13 years of polish, 13 years of, uh, you know, boardroom meetings and, uh, mm. you know, and hashing it out and getting into fights. I'm kidding about that one. But right. <laughs> I mean, again, we, we all know the corporate structure, um, <laughs> but okay. So moving on to the next question, um, yeah. has any further research and development time at Acer store gone into building? a flash-based expansion, um, presumably over USB. And if so, is that something that could turn into an established solution, such as a JBOD, um, um, uh, the same chassis as the flash door, but it's USB connected or USB 4 connected. You guys have got a USB 3.2 Gen 2 expansion chassis there, that's mm -hmm. a JBOD. And for users that are, even users that last year bought the flash door, when it comes to expansions, they're sort of looking at the hard drive expansion. There is no M2 NVMe expansion device there. So is that something that is in progress at Acer Store or at it's, least explored? It's still it's still kind of difficult at this point. We're still looking, you know, we always look at options all the time. You know, mm. the answer is always going to be we're looking at every option and trying to, disc, uh, you know, do the feasibility, right? When you're dealing with SSD, such a new, relatively new product, you're dealing with lower uh, lower scale, right? You're dealing mm. with lower uh, uh, volumes that makes things more expensive. And we have to make sure if we're going to do a product, can we do this at the right price point? We can do anything. Mm. If you want to, we can do a flash expansion unit, but if the price is wrong, mm. then we've wasted, you know, we've wasted the, the money we could have spent improving the experience somewhere else. I mean, the nearest I've seen currently, uh, TerraMaster have got that expansion device that's mm -hmm. two or four hard drive bays and then three or four M2 NVMe bays. And that's been connected via USB 3.2 Gen 2, so 10 gig, mm -hmm. which, you know, you're going to saturate that without even trying. And it's about that stability of the connection, but it's still a slightly imperfect solution when you put it next to a six or 12 port right. M2 NVMe flash system. And so NVMe's. Mm. And the MEs can be rather inconvenient as well to uh, take out and put in, right? If you're oh, dealing yeah. with an expansion unit, right, they're not hot swappable like the hard drives are. Mm. So, you know, it's either you have to keep them in permanently, right? And people pref and uh, people tend to prefer, you know, have their NVMEs internally into their main systems so they can, you know, squeeze out all the power mm. or possible, right? When you're dealing with USB 10 gigabits per second, right, maybe with the advent of USB 4 and yeah. maybe price reductions on uh, certain controller chips and stuff like that, that might be a, uh, a, better, uh, a better solution. It would be interesting to see if something rolls around the corner on that one, particularly as you mentioned with that USB 4 connection. But um, it, needs to, it needs to be you know, adopted by the market, yeah. And even mm -hmm. right now, where is USB 4 on regular consumer devices? It's mm -hmm. It's very I mean, rare it, and it's still very difficult and, and the expense of SSDs as well. I think USB 4 and particularly Thunderbolt 4 as well, not to you know highlight the pandemic, but certainly that hardware shortages and a bunch of other stuff really novel, hurt it at the knees. And I don't think it's ever really been picked up, particularly of course, when Thunderbolt 4 was like, oh, we're the same speed as Thunderbolt 3. And I know there's more to it than that, but I think a lot of users went, we don't care then. And that was very much a right. reaction from the market. Um, next question, uh, and there's only a couple of questions left. Mm -hmm. Much like the previous question uh, regarding early projected heat and consumption numbers, is there any details available on performance numbers on the Flash Door Gen 2 system? How much of that external bandwidth that we're talking about there, those 10s and 5Gs, are going to be saturated? Well, the main problem is that you know, we haven't released the products, right? We're bringing out mm -hmm. some prototypes, and you're certainly welcome to take a look at performance over there. But at the same time, you know, since the product isn't released and the software hasn't been uh, tweaked yet, we have performance numbers all, you know, all over the place right mm -hmm. now as we uh, tweak the design and find the right uh, things. You know, this comes into the uh, the same question as people people always ask me: Why don't you use the same, you know, the most up to date kernel? Because sometimes it introduces bugs 
you know, and performance bugs as well. So we have, so right now we're in that stage to, you know, to determine what, uh, you know, Linux is modular, right? So determine which parts of the Linux uh, kernel and, uh, and modules are working best with the NAS, are most stable, even if they're not necessarily the most new. I think it'll be good to, I mean, next week at Computex, again, everyone, follow this for next week, plug, 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 uh, we will be heading over to the ATA store stand, so yeah. it'll be nice to see the sort of numbers that are getting pumped out by those prototype models there, again, appreciate it's a prototype, but it's going to be very intriguing to see that, particularly, I mean, if, again, unrelated to the question, the lanes uh, for each M.2, they're four times one, correct? For the Locker Store uh, series. Oh, for the flash door. The gen, flash door might come still with TBC. a different configuration, with okay. some getting more than uh, times ah, one. Okay. So but, when, uh, we should have a more final design by Computex. Right now is uh, all hands on deck. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> well, do you know what? I'm not going to challenge you on that here because that feels like a next week discussion. It's a next but, week yeah, thing. I for think sure. it'll be because I, I I remember even at the time thinking if there was any uh, the idea of getting even with a sneaky little PCIe controller on there, seeing how many of those you will be able to get at Gen 4. But again, mm. won't press on that one because that's, that's a next week discussion. And the final question, I think a lot of users have this, um, what is the expected early pricing and maybe even a launch window for the Lockstore Gen 3 and Flash Store Gen 2? Is there anything even approaching mildly set in stone at all? Uh, that one's still a little tough because we're still tweaking the uh, the hardware design right now. Mm. Um, that's why we haven't posted anything on the uh, press release right now. But, you know, obviously we want to try to make sure it's reasonable for the performance that you're getting. Mm. I, I mean, again, I think one of the things that made the flash door stand out, and again, I can't, I'm not going to ask if it was a loss leader, but the pricing of the flash door 6 and 12 Pro was in frankly insanely competitive for what it mm -hmm. was in terms of home architecture i'm not going to say as a flash system that price is insane but for the scale the unique design right. and as i mentioned at the time you would be hard pushed to build something for that Absolutely, same price yeah and that this, was that very much a selling point on that sorry this Kevin. was certainly a comment linus had when he took a look at our product last year it would be very tough to build that so it'll be intriguing to see because now, of course, fast forward 12 months, we are seeing a lot more multi-M2 boards at Gen 4. But again, the mm -hmm. scaling of those, like these two Gen 4, I was looking at the Minis Forum mm -hmm. uh, workstation. I've got a video coming up on that. And inside there, it has three M2s. One of them is Gen 4 times 4. One of them is Gen 3 times 4. And one of them is Gen 3 times 2. You know, mm -hmm. lovely individual performance. I've ma I'm making a video on it being used as a RAID. Raiding those would be a nightmare. You would be bottlenecking and reducing. It would be a mess. Well, so, when it comes to NAS devices, right, and consumer hardware, especially since the uh, the highest end for copper right now is still 10 G base T, right? Mm. So that's primarily the biggest bottleneck for uh, most people. But when you have things raided together, it kind of, you know, smooths itself out a little bit as well. You have a uh, RAID 5 and, uh, you know, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 0, they all have mm. uh, their little performance boost as well. Um, I've just... About five minutes ago, I debated whether to put this in the video. Someone just sent a question uh, <laughs> via the YouTube studio, um, Uto YouTube community. So I'm just going to throw it in there. Will those mm -hmm. 10G ports support auto negotiation? Uh, yes. There you go. And if that was your question, that came through right now. Congratulations. I haven't even got your name. I've just got the notification. But yeah, but there cool. is one thing. I don't. Oh. I think they don't take 2.5G. Okay. I mean, it's it's one of them. I got to double check. Actually, you know, they, let me double check. But they should. They, I, li they I like the idea of that guy's question. This this whole video got derailed by some random question. I love it. Um, <laughs> but no, thank you so much for joining us today, Marco. I uh, look forward to seeing what a store have got to show. I know you guys have got both these devices and uh, a new switch as well. I'm not sure if that will be mm -hmm. on the on the stand as well. The new switch, the switch and store. The switch and store nine Gen two. Cool. We're going to have eight 2.5G ports and one 10G SFP Plus port, and it supports transceivers as well, including copper transceivers. Uh, is that managed or unmanaged? Unmanaged. Cool. Just 
keeping it in my head for next week. But yeah, thank no you so worries. much for joining us. Again, for, uh, for, uh, stay with us next week as we cover more and more Computex. And again, we'll be heading over to that Asus Door stand to see just what the Locker Store Gen 3 and the Flash Door Gen 2 have got uh, to show off in terms of performance. And again, I'll be putting my hand very close to it to test that temperature. I don't know if you've been to Taipei, a bit hot, but you know, never mind. Hopefully there's some kind of air vents. Uh, but <laughs> thank you so much for joining us um, and look forward to seeing you next week. But the rest of you, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any queries or, you know, follow-ups on the questions in today's video, pop them in the comments. I'm sure Marco will have a look at those as well. Uh, but apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic week.